Some people say that the Huawei Mate 9 is one of the best devices of 2017. Some people say that the build quality of this device is absolutely stunning. Some people say that no one, no device out there right now that can beat the Huawei Mate 9. What's up guys, this is Eric from Easy Computer Solutions and this is my review of the Huawei Mate 9. So get your popcorn ready and follow me on this journey. Let's go. What's up guys, this is Eric again with another video. So I got the Huawei Mate 9 here. So let's go ahead and go over the specs. We got the Kirin 960 processor in here, four gigs of RAM. Uh, we got the Leica camera system here on the back, which is a, a 20 megapixel camera and a 12 megapixel camera, respectively. Uh, we got an awesome fingerprint scanner. Uh, we have uh, the volume button here on the side along with your power button. Uh, do you, and at the top, you do have an IR blaster along with your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the side here, you have dual SIM support, also micro SD card support up to 256 gigs. Uh, at the bottom, we got speaker grill here, USB type C and all the bells and whistles. Uh, so the first thing let's talk about uh, with this device is the build quality. Now, y'all know I'm very picky about build quality, and, and I can tell you with the aluminum build that's on this device, it's absolutely stunning. The shampered edges and the details of this device is nice. Uh, I really love the build quality of the Mate 9. Uh, it shows the craftsmanship of a device, and I tell you that I'm very picky when it comes down to build quality and uh, one of the things I can tell you about the Mate 9 uh, that it feels good in the hand you got a 5.9 inch screen here and it's absolutely stunning the whole uh, and you know guys I keep a clear case with this device and a glass screen protector but uh, when it comes down to the build quality yes uh, the Huawei Mate 9 is absolutely stunning when it comes down to the build quality what about the screen? Uh, the screen quality on this device is okay. Uh, I've done actually um, a screen comparison video uh, with this device compared to other devices. And you know, it's shocking. Uh, when you look at it right now, uh, and I'm in bright sunlight, you can say, man, it looks good. It really looks good. But when you go into more details, uh, you can see that uh, the, this uh, panel does have its flaws. So let me show you a little snippet uh, of the uh, screen comparison that I did with this device in other 1080p uh, devices. So check this out. And this is a screen test, a battle of 1080p screens. So today, guys, I'm going to show you the quality of all these 1080p screens on these devices, guys, and see which one is king supreme. So uh, when we're looking at this, all right, and from my perspective here, from my perspective, the OnePlus 3, and the Zenfone 3 gives you the better color. Uh, the Mate 9 is completely washed out. Look at that, washed out. All right, let's go to the blues. All right, All right so when you're looking at the blues here, uh, again, you be the judge for yourself. But look at the Mate 9, it looks a little washed out when it comes down to the, the, the blue here. Uh, but all of them looks pretty deep. Now let's get to the grays here. All right, uh, again, the Mate 9 uh, grades look a little lighter here. We want you guys to see this, all right? Now, uh, the, I like the way the color looks on the Zenfone 3, and the color on the Mate 9 looks a little washed out. Look at that, looks a little washed out there. As you can see with the screen quality there, uh, you when you go into details with this device as far as the panel, uh, you do see some colors that's washed out. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's not the best 1080p panel out there, uh, but, uh, you know, for the average consumer, you won't uh, notice anything dealing with the, the, the panel. Now, since I'm in direct sunlight, I want you guys to look at the viewing angles. Now, I'm in direct sunlight, uh, and so, Again, you're really not getting very good viewing angles, as you can see here. Look at that. So right there, and again, I'm in bright sunlight. Uh, when you look at it to the side there, it does look muted, uh, and it does kind of go away a little bit. So just be advised that if you're in the sun, if you're outside in bright sunlight, 
uh, you will have problems. And yes, I do have it all the way up to the top there. So I do have it at the top as far as brightness. So uh, just be advised that if you outside in bright sunlight, uh, you're definitely going to have some issues with this panel. All right, so let's talk about performance. Uh, performance on this device is A1. Uh, let me show you some screenshots of the benchmark test uh, with this device. As you can see, the benchmark test, this is uh, up there with the elites. Uh, some of the numbers is astronomical. They're very good, uh, better than the 820, 821. Uh, so, yes, when it comes down to benchmark and performance, this device is a screamer. No problems with app openings and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, it's really, it's really up there with the OnePlus 3T when it comes down to performance. So you should have no problems with performance and app opening with this device. Um, let's go ahead and talk about those cameras. Now you do have this Leica system camera in the back and I've been making a lot of videos about the camera system. Uh, I think the camera is okay. I mean, when it comes down to daylight, uh, daytime performance, uh, you were, you're going to get very good shots and videos uh, with this device. Uh, but when it comes down to low light, you do suffer, just like every other smartphone, suffer from uh, having low light shots. But let me go and show you some examples uh, between this device and other devices that I've done uh, video comparisons with. So check this out. Mate 9, the Galaxy S7 on deck. Uh, the Mate 9 got a 20 do 20 megapixel camera, 12 megapixel camera. Uh, the uh, Galaxy S7 has a 12 megapixel camera. So I want y'all guys to take a peep at this. These are supposed to be the best of the best when it comes down to the cameras. And I want y'all guys to see this. All right. And both of them have optical image stabilization. I'm shooting this at 60 frames per second. So I want y'all guys to take a peep at this. Which one give you the better colors? And uh, look at this purple here. All right, take a peep at that purple. Yes, yeah, so go to the tire and check a, take a peep at that black with a little sand on it. Which one give you the better color? Look at the sky. Look at the blues and the whites. Which device give you the better color? All right, so let's walk so y'all guys can see the jumpiness on each device. Which one is the smoothest? Looking at this camera footage here. And I'm gonna go audio from side to side so y'all guys could be the judge for yourself looking at both of these cameras here. Kind of give you a little sneak peek on how the cameras work in these situations. It's a nice hot sunny day here in Louisiana. Look at that color there. Kind of go in, look at the focus points. Which one go focus faster? Go in and out. Let's go back in here and out. So let's go ahead and look at this log here. Which one give you the more details? All right, take a peep at that. I mean, let's go to this tree here. Look how beautiful that tree is. Look how beautiful that tree is. Look at that, look at that green. Just go in a little bit. Take a peep at that. All right, look at that. Look at them colors. Wow. As you can see, uh, looking at the footage there, you be the judge for yourself as far as the cameras. I mean, I think the cameras is okay here, uh, but is it the best? I think when it comes down to uh, low light photography, I think it does suffer. Just like, uh, like I say, like a lot of other devices suffer when it comes down to low light photography. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the battery life. Man, the battery life on here is was was crazy. Not. I've done a battery test video with this device, guys, and uh, wow, this device got me 12 hours of video playback. Oh my God. So look, check this out, right? I got some snippets that I want to show you with the battery test with this device. I'm doing the ultimate battery test. I got the Mate 9. 
the awesome Mate 9. The Mate 9. The Mate 9. Oh my goodness. Look at that. 34% at 7 hours and 14 minutes. Okay, guys. So at 12 hours, 12 minutes, the Mate 9 just went out. All right, so the Mate 9 went out uh, at, at 12 hours and 12 minutes. As you could tell, uh, the battery life on here is very good. Now, uh, I can tell you that for video playback, video playback, I would give this King Supreme when it comes down to video playback. I never had a device that lasts 12 plus hours on video playback ever. Uh, and wow, so I am definitely impressed with that. But here's the thing with real world use, real world use when you're using the device or playing games, watching videos, doing your normal activity, working it hard, you will not get 12 hours of battery life. Let's make sure we understand that. There's a difference between video playback and real world use. So I'm getting about six and a half, seven hours of screen on time uh, with a really good, very good standby time with this device. One of the things that uh, we, we talk about a lot here is uh, when it comes down to uh, the operating system that's on top of Android and uh, it's running Android 7.0. Uh, one of the things that... Uh, it's a speedy device and it's optimized pretty decent. Uh, but I really am not a fan of the big boxy icons there. Uh, and uh, I, haven't threw, I haven't thrown Nova Launch on here yet. I mean, it is real big and boxy. Again, 1080p screen here. Uh, but uh, I mean, it does perform very well. You do have some bloat on here. All right. And uh, it's not too much bloat, but yes, you do. It does come with some bloat on this device and uh so i deleted some of the bloatware but i mean you do have uh some bloatware that could probably get deleted here let's talk about the price uh the price of this device costs 599 dollars plus tax uh, and when you filter in uh, tax plus maybe a screen protector in the case uh, you're looking at maybe about an extra 30 40 bucks right uh, depending on what kind of case that you get this device is going to hit you almost 700 dollars uh, $599 plus tax, and, and, and I got 10% tax where I'm at, so it's, you know, it, it hit me for about uh, 670 bucks. All right, so this device costs 670 bucks before cases and screen protectors. So if you add another 30, 35 dollars, 40 bucks on there, you're over the $700 price point for this device. Now, at a $700 price point, uh, I was, I'm critical about some of the things about this device, and then this device you can't buy on contract. This device, uh, you have to go into your local Best Buy or go into your local Amazon uh, and order this device on Amazon and, and stuff like that. So, uh, are willing are people willing to shell out uh, six hundred seventy dollars plus uh, get the case and plus that over seven hundred dollars for a device like this? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people always ask the question: Is this device worth seven hundred dollars? I mean, with a 1080p screen, look, here's the thing. No fluff, no passes. I say this a lot, that uh, any device that costs over $500 ought to give you a 2K display. And the reason why is because of VR and, and stuff like that, right? I mean, a lot of people that don't do VR, that's understandable. But every now and then, I like to pop devices in VR. So, uh, you know, when you do pop a 1080p screen like this in VR, taking it that this device does not have a a, a, a a premium good 1080p as i showed in my screen test video you will have issues but for 700 dollars it's very hard uh, for a person to walk in and pay 700 dollars for a device so, again 670 dollars wherever you live at if you don't have no taxes good for you uh, but uh, i know that i buy devices and i have to pay taxes and paying almost $700 and I, I'm actually over $700 with accessories with this device and you get into the high end elite and don't get me wrong this is a great device it's fast it's speedy build quality is A1 cameras are exceptional the, the screen quality is meh right I, I'm a guy that always like to buy devices off contract so I have to look at uh, the full value the full price of devices and so at a $670 price point, that's a high-end King Supreme price for a device like this. And this is Eric from Music Computer Solutions. That's my review of the Huawei Mate 9. It's a pretty decent device. It's pretty good. Again, you be the judge for yourself. 
Uh, if you want to shell out the, the 600 plus dollars for this device, uh, and also when, once you get accessories and everything, you'll be in the high seven, you'll be in the low $700 for this device. You know, is it worth your pocketbook? Is it worth your money? I don't know. You be the judge for yourself. This is Eric from Easy Computer Series. Leave a question down below. Let me know what you think about the Huawei Mate 9 and all its glory. See you guys on the next video. Peace.